Hi, Jackie. Hi, Kristen. Uh, thanks for taking time out to chat with us at Glitter on your new animation series, Do Re Mi. Um, it's a ple Pretty. pleasure to meet you both. So um, I first want to say congrats to both of you on your fabulous careers. Uh, Kristen, you're the epitome of the working actress uh, from your amazing success with Frozen and Gossip Girl and your Hollywood star and all of your charitable endeavors. And Jackie, fans love your work, including your roles on Glow, The Good Place, as well as hosting Best Leftovers Ever. So congrats to you both. Thank you. You're welcome. So how did Do Re Mi come about uh, with you both as executive producers? And can you tell us about your voice roles in the series as well? And I know, Jackie, you did some writing as well. Um, actually, well, songwriting, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Do Re Mi came about because I have always been super passionate about music and how life changing it is for kids, right? So um, I just say it all the time, but I just wouldn't really be the human I am today, if it weren't for making music really my entire life, my dad instilling it in me playing the piano when we were kid when I was a kid. And so I found out from my niece and nephew that um, music and arts education are the first things to go when schools are facing budget cuts. And my buddy Mike and I both were like, well, what? So we thought, why don't we, there's a hole in the market. Why don't we create a show that brings music education into the homes of these kids if it's not going to be in schools. Um, enter pro executive producer, actress, mogul extraordinaire, who then took our idea and more than helped us make it a reality and always, always keep an eye on that mission statement, which was make sure music education is getting into the hands of kids. Jackie likes to say this thing called we're sneak teaching, yes. which is incredible because it's so true. I mean, you you to have an uh, a property that's successful, you do have to have a, a level of entertainment. Like you can't, it can't just be, there are plenty of great music programs out there, but not everybody watches the music education thing or downloads it on their phone because they, they want to be entertained first. So to bring kids into this world, we were like, great, we can t create an entertainment based show about these three little songbirds named Do, Ray and me. Well, already there, they, they know the first three notes of the scale, right? There's music theory <laughs> lesson number one. Yes. And everything in Bebopsburg where they live, musical instruments grow on trees. So we talk about different musical instruments. So they have recognition. So if they ever want to join the band, they'll know exactly what instruments they're choosing from. And each um, episode allows us to, and this literally was shown to us by the TV gods, allowing us to fuse an emotional lesson, which you need in a kid's show, with a music genre lesson because we represent 52 different ones so each episode is like either reggae or jazz or blues or rock or country and then also with a music theory lesson like for example jackie's character ray which is this little pink one wants to join a dance troupe she's overworking herself she's not listening to her body which is important for kids to know how to do and there's a song called listen to your body when it's trying to talk to you and it has a the word rest in it a lot, where her character takes a deep breath and rests. She's listening to her body, but in music theory on the scale, and I mean, on the um, grid, there's rests. And it's when you learn in music to be quiet. And so we're fusing sort of all of these things together. So we're sneak teaching. And the greatest thing about it is that Jackie and Dave Schuler, who wrote all the music, they write for very well-known artists that are on the radio all the time. So they can write a hook that doesn't make you want to put the television in the microwave as a mom. Yes, right? it's not a kid's hook. So they'll stay in your ear. They'll be teaching your kids something, but it won't drive you crazy. Nice. That was my next question to ask, you know, what endearing qualities are going to make this, you know, remarkable for for parents and, and kids. So that's that's wonderful. And I know you mentioned, uh, Jackie, um, how you kind of got your start and your love for music. I know the sound of music for me was it for uh, just, you know, having an interest in music. I can't sing, though. But what were some of the movies or TV shows outside of family um, that sparked your interest? Oh, please. I mean, for me. It was uh, Little Shop of Horrors was huge for me. That movie, I knew every song. Also, it taught me how to do runs. Mm -hmm. You had Keisha Campbell, you had these like amazing singers doing the background vocals. Those are the background vocals. They were yeah. sort of fun. So that really opened, cracked my brain open. And I'm from New York and mm -hmm. I was very lucky. I didn't, I didn't come from a wealthy family, but the thing we did, me and my parents did, I remember being seven and my dad taking me to Chorus Line. 
Nice. And then to go in a lame, me and my dad went to Les Mis. And when I was, my dad's a, a singer songwriter. So I, I grew up in a, in a really musical household. And I never, I never didn't, ha I was surrounded by music constantly, really. I remember buying cassette tapes. Oh, I still love Bette Midler and Michael Bolton. Yeah, Bette Midler, babe. like, you know what I'm saying? So I there were, I mean, every musical that was around in the 90s, mm -hmm. We would like, that is how my parents, like, that's how I would beg them to spend their money. Like, I didn't really want things. I just wanted to go see musicals. I begged for cassettes. I begged for CDs. Yes. Music has always been it for me. Nice. Piano lessons, guitar lessons. Nice. I spent um, countless, countless hours in the mirror because I watched Funny Girl and um, My Fair Lady on repeat. And I would do... Um, who taught her everything she knows from Funny Girl and play both the dad and the mom and like have a scarf for the mom and the hat for the dad when they'd sing. Nice. And then singing All I Want is a Room Somewhere or I Could Have Danced All Night. I mean, countless hours. Yeah. That means too good. I mean, it's hard to answer that question because there were thousands of inspirations. And I think that's what's so exciting about this show because of the bringing it, circle them back, of the 52 episodes, there are 52 musical genres represented here. Yeah. And so there, it isn't just one thing where it's like, you know, God bless baby beluga and these other songs for babies. But, you know, this sort of isn't that. I mean, when we were creating this, KB's kids were listening to Hamilton and knowing the raps and yeah. getting the intricate rhythms. And when they would wait a beat and then the word will come in and whatever it was, it was like, these kids were picking right up on it. It wasn't like, it didn't have to just be like one woman in a ukule with a ukulele in a classroom. Like they and there's so many things that kids don't get to learn about, like Yacht Rock, which like I was like, my kids are going to have a musical education in like rap and Yacht Rock and like the important genres of music that tell stories and do really, really deep things to your brain. Wonderful. Um, well, you both are the ultimate BFFs. Um, how did you meet and have you worked together in the past? I believe you might have. And what's the secret to maintaining your very fun friendship? Oh, man. I think just like being who we are, you know, I, I was just thinking of such a funny story. Like I remember years ago, there was like somebody I wasn't getting along with and KB was like, no, no, she, she, she's fine. Like it's, it's you. Like she, she triggers, she triggers you. Like, and it's like, oh, that, that's why this friendship works. Cause then I had to step back a second in that moment and go like, oh yeah, that person isn't so bad. I just think that they're like, maybe they were, I thought they were trying to steal my thunder in that moment. And then she's the best friend who's like, Hey, here's, here's actually like objectively, here's how that actually went. Mm -hmm. And I think not to blow smoke up my own butt, but it takes a big person to be able to hear that from someone and not be like, well, forget you then. Yes. It takes two people, her being able to dish it and take it and me being able to dish it and take it. And it's, it's made for a pretty um, wonderful, simpatico working relationship. Yeah. Honesty and vulnerability is, I mean, look, you'd see Jackie and I, and we're both very loud and brash together. You wouldn't be like, I bet they're very vulnerable and have a growth mindset and a commitment to evolving. <laughs> but we, we do, you know, we have a yeah. lot of fun together, but the reality is we, we can dish it and take it and we keep each other on track. So we can be very vulnerable and we can also be very honest. And that was also why it translated into a great working relationship because Jackie knows like as her, as her producer, like I have her back. And when I say like that can't be done, it really can't be done. But when she says to me, I need you to fight to get this done. I know that that means I really need to get it done. Like there, there's just a trust factor and an honesty factor that can't be replaced with a regular um, business partner. So I have some quick, fun questions. Um, answer however you'd like. Um, how would you describe each other in three words? Ooh, okay. Super, super talent. Compassionate. Generous. I would say generosity is like one of your superpowers. It's psychotic. Like, I don't know how you even have, yeah, it's not. It's I would say um, fun. And I there's a lot of different adjectives to encapsulate that, but fun would be the main thing. Like bring the party. Um, 
it's not one word, but commitment to growth for sure. Like when Jackie's saying like she can take it and understand how she needs to grow, like I, I have very few friends that have as much of a commitment to growth as a human being as Jackie does. Um, fun loving, commitment to growth, and I'm gonna say glittery. Because Jackie kind of sparkles wherever she goes. Oh. <laughs> um, how dare you? What, um, well, the next question was, um, what's one skincare product that you, you know, can't live without? You only get to pick one. <laughs> one? One. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to say my Clarisonic. It's not a product, but it, because RIP Clarisonic, but like, I would rather wash my face with water than without my Clarisonic. But I, but I will say I did just create what I think is the perfect face moisturizer um, with a company called Happy Dance that I co-created because it's got my your daily dose of CBD in it, but it also has four different molecular weights of um, hyaluronic acid, which I'm addicted to because it plums from the inside out. Nice. Not to brag, not to brag, but how is it not already at my door? Did it not come out yet? No, it, just, it, it comes out next week. I'll get you oh, some. I was like, what's happening? Because um, that'll be my favorite product, and then I can say it too. But at the moment. What do I love? Oh, you know what I love? I love those skin Iceland eye patches. They're the only ones that work. Nice. They really, really, they really depuff. The other ones are just sort of like decoration on your face for a half hour. These ones really suck out the night before. Nice. Oh, wait, well, can I say one more? Can I say one more? Charlotte Tilbury's Pillow Talk lip color. Wearing oh, it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you both so much. It was a pleasure chatting with you and looking forward to chatting again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Nice Bye -bye. to meet you. Bye. You too.